Uh, at the beginning to uh, thank Sarah Edmonton for let, uh, letting us use the space again. It's um, nice and uh, it's always good to have a nice consistent space to meet. Um, and as well to, um, I'm totally forgetting the guy's name right now, right? Strathcom! <laughs> Strathcom for the pizza, for the um, Udo knows pizza and for my poor estimating ability. There is also extra pizza that people can take <laughs> at the end. If you want to take a slice of your home, there's the empty boxes that are right beside it and two pretty much full boxes of pizza. Aaron Faye was sick today, so I lost out on his estimate <laughs> hours. Um, so please feel free to take a few slices. And uh, yeah, so this is uh, Gazim Hoxha. He's going to talk about uh, the South Library and managing changes uh, in Django. So thanks. Go. Thank you, Brian. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Gazim, and I'm going to be talking about Django and uh, specifically how you would manage your uh, Django models and their life cycle, essentially, as they change. Um, I run a uh, little project right now called uh, HackerNewsDigest.com. Uh, and basically what it is is that it's a uh, digest website, a, uh, essentially, that sends news uh, to your email uh, when you subscribe. Um, Hacker News is a social news website where you can go and uh, find out what's up with uh, different technologies. And uh, they usually have some something about the NSA every day. And uh, yeah, so it is an interesting place to go. And uh, Hacker News Digest just gives you an email at the end of the day saying these were the top posts today. So you don't have to constantly keep uh, checking it. So for example, we have a command line murder mystery. Don't tell me you don't want to read that. Um, so that, that's Hacker News. and. Uh, Essentially, today I'm going to be using some of the code that I built for Hacker News Digest in, or, in order to scrape it, and more, mostly just the models, uh, to demonstrate uh, what uh, the model changes and, and uh, the South framework in Django allows you to do. So um, just an overview of what I'm about to talk about. Um, I'm just going to briefly go over Django models just so we can uh, reintroduce them to people who are not familiar with them, per se. Um, can I get a show of hands of how many people have played with Django a little bit? OK. Excellent. So uh, there's a lot of people that are familiar and some that aren't. And so it's great that I'll go over that and just sort of bring everybody a little bit up to speed. Um, then I'm going to go and cover Django limitations, um, Django model limitations specifically. Um, go on to introduce South, then uh, the different South migrations that are available. Um, so we have schema migrations, data migrations, and then I'm going to mention a word or two on Django 1.7. So what's a Django model? Essentially, if you're programmed in the traditional PHP or whatever way you were doing it before Django came along and Rails and so on, you were, you were used to a lot of uh, SQL in your code. So you would go and uh, have a query that selects your table and then you loop over the rows, you get your columns, and then you have to convert your data back to whatever language you're using in those objects that, that you're working with. The nice thing about Django models is that it abstracts that away from you. So you no longer have to go down to SQL and write those queries yourself. So the way you would define a Django model, and I should mention that there has been a uh, talk on Django. I'm sure you can go and uh, reference it in the archives in the Edmonton Pi website. So uh, the way you would define your Django models is just like a Python class. So you, d you have a class post right here. And we just inherit from a model object. We don't care what it is necessarily. And then the rest of it is just simple Python. You have three fields in this example. We have a, so this is a Hacker News post. Think of it that way. So the post might have a title. We can specify the data type that the title will have. So in this case, uh, car field. Specify a length. Um, and uh, we have an HN ID, Hacker News ID, just sort of to keep to keep in sync with the Hacker News post and what, how, how it changes. And then we might have something like social points on the story. So how many votes it, it, it has had. Um, the nice thing with Django again is that you have this model 
And instead of having to go create your tables, create your database, if you, give your, uh, if you set up your Django properly, there's a settings uh, project, or settings file rather, you just run a simple command, and it actually goes and creates your database and creates your tables for you, um, which is really handy. So you literally have to do, do no SQL up to this point at all. And then once you have your model, you can go ahead and in your Python code, start treating your, your database objects, your data, as just simple Python. You don't have to worry about converting it from uh, the original stored uh, data format in uh, SQL. You can just start querying. So for example, we have the post model here we defined. And assuming we ran the script to create the database, um, we can just go post, title, we specify title, HNID, points, and that's just a simple Python instance. And then we go p.save, it saves it, and now p is our database object that's been stored. We can access it in Python, we can update the data, go save it again, and it's really flexible. Now, if we want to go and get all of the Python objects, or, or in this case, all the post objects, you just go post.objects.all, and you have all your objects. If you want to filter, there's lots of very powerful ways that Django allows you to filter. Any questions so far? So the magic of Django is that you run your command, it creates your tables, and you're on your way. It's sweet. When I was doing my uh, uh, first Django project, I went through the tutorials, and then at the end of the tutorials, they're like, okay, you've learned what you've learned, now go do it. I was like, sweet, let's do this. Um, I ran my commands, I did my model, and I came to a point where I was like, okay, oops, I kind of made a mistake there. I need my model to actually change. I need more data in it. So normally you go back to the syncdb command, which uh, updates, uh, which creates your tables. You run it, and it doesn't do anything. You're like, what's happening here? There's, there's an issue. And you'll soon find out that that's actually the Django limitation. It does bring you to that point. It creates your initial tables, but it will not actually modify them for you. So if you need to add another field to your object, if you need to modify the data type of it, yeah, you're, you're kind of on your own. And that's where South kind of kicks in. So South picks up from where Django leaves off, really. Um, in, in South, you have essentially a schema migration and a data migration. Schema migration would be something where you change the schema of your table. So you might add a column or a field in your Python class. You might delete it. You might change the type of it. Data migration is essentially the point where South cannot really read your mind as to what you really want to do. That's the point where you need to start writing some of your own South migration scripts in order to be able to move the data from the format you have to the format that you want in the database. So um, getting started with South, uh, if you have a new app that you're creating, uh, just so you know, uh, for the people that are not familiar with Django, Django has this concept of apps. Um, they encourage you to create your website in a uh, modular way where you have these apps that are kind of a component on their own, and they're, they're very specialized, they do their own thing. And the idea is that when you start a new project, and let's say you have a uh, comments app, and then you want to add some social functionality to allow people to comment on your, on your new project, you shouldn't have to go ahead and rec recreate that, recreate the models and everything. You just include your old comments app that you created, and you get all that functionality for free. That's, that's the, the ideal way, anyway. Um, so. The way you would create a new app in Django is you run the Django command uh, called start app, and then you provide your app name. Um, you add it to your uh, installed apps um, in your settings.py, and then uh, you run a couple commands with self to tell it that this is your new app, and please start managing my, my changes in this model. So I'm just going to go ahead and quickly show you that. So we go manage. This is the Django command 
file really what you is what it is. Start app. We want to create a new app. We'll call it test app. Okay. So now we have our test app and we go to web settings and we want to search for this uh, settings file or tuple rather and we want to do we add it there just to tell Django that this is actually a Django app and we want to Django to manage it and then uh, a lot of different Django apps that help you do things like self look for installed apps uh, list or tuple and that's how they kind of determine what's an app and what's really what's not an app so uh, we have that and now since I have self already installed I just go uh, schema migration test app uh, and of course I forgot to do the last part initial So now, since it's a brand new app, Self will create a directory underneath the app called Migrations. Um, now I didn't define any models in there, but let's just go ahead and uh, run the migration now. So Self has two, uh, two commands. You've got schema migration, that creates your migration file. That tells you where you want to go. That tells you what the action of the actual migration should be. And then you actually execute the migration. To execute the migration, you run the migrate command. Migrate test app. And now we have our first migration. Um, since we don't have anything in our model, we should probably go ahead and change that. Um, we'll just call it test we'll just declare something like setting um, I do a lot of C sharp hence the semicolon um, that looks good. So now we have an existing app. We have a model. We made a change to it because initially there was no fields and we want to do schema migration on test app. And then we run the, the actual migration. So that's how that works. Uh, you have your uh, um, app creation in Django, and you have uh, essentially just the basics of self. Now notice that um, this command, I did uh, test app and then initial. The reason you can do that is because it's your brand new app. Um, what may happen is that you might already have a, a project that you have models, and you already have uh, a database structure in place, you run sync to be and it already has that. Um, what you'll run into is that if you do initial, uh, self will, will scream at you because when it actually tries to run the migration, it'll try to create the table for you. But since you already have the table, it cannot do that. So what you have to do is you have to fake it. Fake it till you make it. Um, so you uh, tell self instead of initial, you want a fake uh, parameter. And then you go ahead and uh, migrate the app as per usual. So then self will take whatever point you have your model and will create a migration file at that point and it'll assume that that's uh, the starting point of your model. Um, <clears throat> so what I've showed you just now, the schema migration command um, is essentially to manage the changes in your columns or in your fields if you want to add a data type and so on and so forth. Um, and I've already showed you how to uh, do the 
command auto, of course I always forget that part. Um, so essentially what Celeth does is that it looks at your model and it looks at the state that it's in right now and when you run it again, it looks to see, it, it tries to make an intelligent guess as to what has changed. So if you have a same field name, so it's say date, and you're changing that from a uh, date time field to a date field, it'll pick that up. And it'll, uh, it'll do the change in the database for you when you run the migrate command. And if you change the name, it'll do, it'll do things like that as well. Sometimes it, it cannot guess as to what you really did. It thinks like you added a field and you deleted it. So you have to be very careful as to what uh, self thinks you did and make sure you're not, you're not corrupting your data. Now, that's the part where schema migration ends. Now, let's say you need to manage and massage data in a different way. So let's say you have a date field or, or a date time field that you want to change into a date as well as time field. You have to create a data migration in order to do this. So there's a few steps that you would do this in. So let's say first what we do is we have our, our date field, date time field. It's, a, it's, it's of type of date time and we want to change it to a date and time separately for whatever reason. And this is just an example I, I came up with. Uh, not very realistic, but uh, you, could, you, could, you could see a problem that you could run into. Um, first thing you want to do is since you have your one field, you want to split it into two, you kind of need to add two separate fields in order to manage the data that you're going to split. Now initially when I was working on this example, I was like, okay, so let's just call this date and leave that and just sort of change the format. But then I realized that if I do that, it's going to lose my data. So I need a temporary date field in order to store my date and a time field. Um, and then what we can do is we can run a schema migration at the end to delete the date field. And we'll go ahead and uh, show you that. So um, this is the realistic uh, model that I have for Hacker News posts. Basically, I already have a date field. What we want to do is split into, and the date type, uh, the time, or the type is date time. Uh, we want to switch it into a date only. and a time only. Let's just call that time. Okay, so I've made my change in my model and now traditionally you would probably have to run a SQL query to change your, your, uh, your database. Uh, but since we have South, we can go ahead and uh, just tell South to do a migration on this. Uh, oh yeah, actually I'll show you that um, just to show you how it looks. So let's say describe, what is it? So right now we'll see that date field has been created with the daytime format and some other information here. And there is no, as you can see, there's no date only or there's no time field. Um, we'll go ahead and run the command. Manage schema migration. And then we do our app name, posts. And then since this is an existing app, we just do auto. Um, what South will tell you is that since my new fields, date only, and uh, in a second it'll be time only as well, don't have, are not nullable, we need some sort of a default value. So you could either quit, you could choose option one to quit and specify a default, or you could specify a default right here, which is kind of handy. And uh, what's nice is that when you choose option two, it'll tell you you have the daytime module already included in here. And whatever you type in here, 
dot date, let's just say date. Um, let's just say we want year first to sort of just gauge as to when we started tracking date because there's no, there's no uh, good date you could put here. Um, we want to do that and now it'll do the same thing for time. Um, let's say 23, 23 for no good reason. So as you can see, okay, um, a field has been added and a file, a migration file has been created for us by South. Um, let's just take a quick look at what that looks like. So the file that South uses to migrate our data is essentially uh, adding two columns, our, our time and our data only field. And it specifies the default right here, which we just specified. Um, it also provides a backwards method in case you need to sort of play back and forth with your data or, or your model. And now we ran schema migration and now we need to just migrate it in order to actually execute. So uh, keep in mind, this still has no date because we haven't run the migrate command yet. We run the migrate, it'll execute this as a SQL queries and it'll actually run. And now the magic happens. I said magic, yeah, there we go. Um, Where's time, right here. Uh, so we just created these for us right now. So that's the first step of a data migration because we need two other fields in order to split this, this date field. Now we run the data migration command to actually uh, create a shell file. The data migration is not very smart. Like it doesn't, it cannot read your mind as to what you want to do. So we run data migration and let's just call split date. So you do, uh, actually I'm missing the app. Um, posts. And then the last parameter here is just the name of the file you kind of want to manage as to just to keep track of what you're doing. So it, as you can see, it created split date for us. We go into here and mind you, <laughs> this little warning here, when I started using South, I don't think it existed. So what I fought with is I would go and import my model from my app.models import model and then I'd be like, okay, I'm just using that. It's still Django, right? So you go ahead and just try to query your model, change your model. And I would get these weird errors. I'm like, what's going on? Uh, Django, uh, South rather, does not like you to do that. The reason is because it freezes the model in time when you actually run the schema or data migration. It needs to do that because your model, the, the nature of South is that you're using to migrate your data and, and your model is gonna change. So if it keeps a, if it doesn't keep a copy of the model at that time, it really has no idea what to work with. So it freezes your model at that specific point in time. Hence, you cannot just import your, your model like you would in an, any other module. So uh, the way you would access your, uh, your model is through this parameter provided in um, app name, module name. So what we want to do is we want to take our date field and split it into date time. So simple Python here, we just go for each post in now orm.ourapp is posts.modelName is uh, post. And essentially you can treat this exactly like you would your, your app your model. So we go object dot all. So for every object in there, we want to take post dot date only and we want to assign it to post so itself dot date, which was our daytime field dot date, which just gives us the date. 
And then we want to do same thing for time. The time is equal to post dot date time gives us a time and lastly we just want to save this so it'll go through here it'll go through every saved post object update take essentially the date current date remove the date part not remove the date part it'll just access the date part assign it to date only take the time part assign it to our time field and then save and then it'll just repeat that um, so we'll save that and keep in mind we still have to do our migrate in order to actually see that this work hopefully work um, so let's just show you what it looks like right now um, so I already have So we're just going to get the first object, or not the first one, second one. Um, so date, we have that. Um, date only, it should give us our year one. And time should give us 23, 23, or whatever I picked. There we go. And that's not the actual date and time split. So we'll actually go run that now. Um, we'll run the migration. Migrate, posts, and now in theory it should have ran that script through every data, through every post object that we had, and changed the data format with uh, to populate our, our fields. So mm. it hasn't done it. Um, let's see, is it because it's already in memory, maybe? No. Okay, so I already have... Uh, so we have date, date only. There you go. So it's updated uh, from year zero to year 2014. Good stuff. And time has also been updated. So we saw our data migration work. Um, so uh, some other caveats. I uh, already mentioned the issue with importing models. You cannot do that. Um, rather, you access your, your model through the ORM. Um, and like I said, self freezes your models, so do not rely on ongoing import app dot models or from app models import whatever. Um, don't do that; you'll get in trouble. Um, so lastly, the cool thing is that Django has finally come around to um, fixing this this issue and and sort of building South into Django. Um, it's not exactly the same. So what you, you'll have is you'll have in Django 1.7 your sync db command, which is used to create your tables and all that good stuff. It's replaced by uh, migrate. Um, or make migrations, perhaps. Um, and then you have, which is similar to schema migration as we saw in south. And then you have the other command migrate, which actually runs the migration. Now. Uh, the command, the, the actual files produced by Django will be slightly different. It seems like Django will have, and this is still under development, so hard to say where, where it will end up. Uh, Django will have an operations list that it, it runs to your, to your models, and that's how it keeps track of, of your changes, where the self had a backwards and forward method where you could, you could kind of play, play with it. Um, any questions? Are they uh, still planning to do development on South after Django 1.7 comes out? Sorry? Are they still planning to do development on South after Django 1.7 comes out? I haven't heard about it, but I don't see why they would. I think what they should do is just make a tool where you can just port your <laughs> data and be done with it. Isn't one of the South 
authors involved in writing the new migration, I thought? It, yeah, is that right? That they they learned from from self. Stuff oh, is that right? To oh, they did a Kickstarter. Yeah. So one question I had: you had two, and eventually you'd have three separate migrations for splitting the field. Is there any reason that you couldn't just have a single migration that did all those steps at once? So, um, single migration to. Move the data, re delete the, the fields. Yeah. I don't, I don't see how that would work because you're going to delete the, the column that you're working with in the same script. I, I mean, I know it would come afterwards, but it's a good question. I'm not sure. Like, it seems like if you take those, the three forward methods that you get and concatenate them and just run them all at once rather than separate, that would mean that your database is more consistent between each of your migrations. That is true. I haven't, I haven't really done that. I, I kind of keep it one step at a time. Mm -hmm. I, know, I noticed that when you were creating the migrations, they were numerically numbered. Um, how does it handle if you have multiple, like two developers create migration 03 and then you merge things? Does it That's a really good question. It breaks. It breaks? <laughs> it breaks pretty badly. Okay. So they, you know from experience? Yeah. Okay, there you go. <laughs> uh, essentially at that point, because Self ends up storing that, basically the name of the migration in a table inside the database to tell itself which migrations have been applied. And if it sees that a number three has already been applied, it freaks out. And, so oh, so you have to, yeah, so essentially you either have to make that number four, or you have to like get a better development cycle because <laughs> you shouldn't have to keep migrations at the same time. Yeah, or it can just work locally. Right. Any other questions? Brian? How much manual, like how much do you trust the automatic portion of like the creation of the migrations? I haven't had any issues. I know it sounds a little bit crazy, mm -hmm. but uh, I haven't had too many issues. I, I've had my troubles with it where you're just hitting the wall, you're like, why isn't this working? And uh, oh, I should mention that uh, South, when it does fail to migrate something, and you happen to be using uh, MySQL ISAM, no, not uh, ISAM. Uh, uh, what is it? What's the other one? Oh, it is my ISAM. Yeah. So uh, InnoDB supports transaction, but my ISAM doesn't. And if it doesn't support transactions, South will like yell at you. Um, so yeah, just something to note there. Is that right? Um, InnoDB doesn't support transactions, but not on DLL stuff, like free table and that stuff. Oh, OK. So there's no problem there. The migration OK, there you go. So it's like, oh, I have this table, but I didn't actually this piece. Which is actually a good reason to keep those migrations separate, like, like you're doing. Right, right, right. Some yeah. So careful when you're using uh, MySQL. I have your data first. <laughs> good <laughs> advice. Uh, one point is that South will also load migrations. So if you happen to have an initial data lying around and you mm -hmm. run migrates, it will load that data and potentially overwrite your data or free, depending <laughs> on how it's working. Um, you, you had mentioned that it freezes your, your model. Yeah, that's what they call it. Um, like, and you were, you were still able to use your model. You just had to reference it. Yeah, so you're just using the ORM parameter passed in by South instead of going app name model important models. Right, but is it like I guess do you do you ever like run the full like set of migrations or like what happens if something in yeah. the model is changed yeah. in the future and you're referencing it and it doesn't like it no longer has the so that's that's a free. So that's the thing. Since it freezes it, whenever you create your migration, yeah. it'll just take a snapshot of that and keep it around. So then you could go back to, you could actually do reverse, the, the whole reason there's a reason, uh, there's a reverse uh, method in the migration file is that you could go back. So if you go back to the, the creation of the app at, at time zero, yeah. you could run your whole migrations. And even if they're data migrations, it doesn't care. So does it have like the models from that time? Yes. So it, it exactly, which is yeah, that's the whole reason why you cannot access the current right. model. Um, 
good question there. Uh, also, you'll notice that uh, <laughs> I've ran into this a lot. Uh, the model, the, the method fields, where you have those, those calculated fields, I'm not sure what to call them. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Where you have a, a, a field, it'll be a method in your model. It's not a, a, a normal field. It'll return something by accessing another field. You cannot use those because that's just a method in your Python code. It's not really something that self can, can save properly and, and use that. So when I first started, I actually ended up creating my own user model. Very dumb mistake. Uh, and then I had a really difficult time trying to migrate the, the password encryption to the actual uh, auth module. Yeah, so, so be careful with, uh, with the methods in your models. It, uh, it would, so yeah, that's, it just the whole that's the cool thing. Yeah, so it takes your, your current tables and doesn't touch any of your data. And it'll, it'll just add a column. And then if the column is like not nullable, it'll ask you, what do you want to do? There's, there's some, you're, t you're telling me it's not nullable, but you haven't provided any data. So that's where you can provide a default value for the time being. Okay. But the thing is, if, uh, if I updated that uh, a specific column in the model, but I didn't add a new column. It will just update that. So the, yeah, so it, it does update the data type. Okay. It can do that. Uh, again, so if you're doing stuff like that, yeah. be very careful. You might want to do a, a data migration on your own because you don't necessarily know what will happen to that data, whether it will be still valid in, the, in that column or not. And I haven't really played around with invalid data. I don't know what happens if you take a date uh, object and convert it to a string. I'm not sure what happened. Any other questions? Have you migrated anything other than MySQL? Um, yes, I've used uh, PostgreSQL and uh, South, uh, unless I'm mistaken, supports all the same uh, databases that uh, Django supports. Yeah, S SQLite works as well. Of course, it complains about transactions and no stuff surprises. like that. Yeah. Any other questions? All right, thank you guys.